in relation to bringing together some concepts we've learned thus far, including the breadboard, the meter, and making some resistance measurements, there's actually a little experiment we can do to convince ourselves about the interconnection on the breadboard. So as you can see, what I have attached here is I have the meter on and all set up in ohm mode, and I have it on the 2000 ohm scale, which is sufficient for what we're doing here. Then I have the two leads coming out, and I have them taped here so they won't move off the camera. And I have two of these really convenient clip leads sort of attached to the ends of the probes here. And then I'm bringing out these clip leads here, and to make things even more fun, I have them hooked on two pairs of wires like this. So what these wires will allow me to do is just sort of start sticking them into the breadboard, and I can watch how the resistance on the meter changes as I probe around the breadboard. So let me just do the quick test here that if I take these two pieces of wire and touch them together, you see that the resistance drops to about zero ohms, indicating a direct connection between these two wires here. Now I can take that, that example here, it's called ohming things out, and I can go onto the breadboard and see where I can find things that may or may not be connected. So I'll just sort of randomly stick this wire into this hole here, and this wire into this hole, and I see that nothing happens on the meter. In other words, it stays sort of in overload mode, which is an infinite resistance because as we discussed in the previous video here, these two different columns on the breadboard are not connected, and we see the meter is verifying that for us. If I took this and put it over and say another column, still no connection. Another column, still no connection. But now if I took this wire and stuck it into the same column as one of these other wires here, then there you go. You see the resistance of the meter suddenly drop like that, indicating there's a very low resistance between these two points, or the breadboard has these two points being interconnected. And I can put it indeed on any any hole in this column here, any hole, you see all the interconnects sort of work out there. And remember we said that this gap here in the breadboard sort of separates the columns, so where if I stick it in the same column there, I do see this resistance dropping really low, indicating a connection. If I jump the gap but stay on the same column, the resistance goes back to infinity. So it's in the same column, but that gap again breaks the electrical uh, connection. And as we'll see in a later video here, this gap is really convenient when we start in inserting integrated circuits onto the breadboard for doing some experiments with those. So you can sort of probe around the breadboard all you want, but the lower half behaves like the upper half. And let's even look at these upper rows here that we were discussing earlier. So if I stick this wire into the upper row there and this one into the total upper row there, you see again, direct electrical connection between them. But if I take this and put it in the same column as the first row right there, we see no connection. Because remember we said these, uh, these horizontal rows sort of are connected only horizontally across the breadboard. So I'd have to be up in that same row in order to get any inter interconnections in there. So if I go down to the second row, there's no connection in there, but I'd have to move this one down to that second row, find the whole interconnection. So you should, this is just a great way of messing around with the ohm meter a little bit and understanding what sort of information it tells you. That is, if you get the zero resistance, there is a direct electrical connection between the two points. And the breadboard, just a great thing to test those ohmic measurements on.